Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss bond value. In this video, we will define the topic of bond value, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of bond value falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Bonds are a form of debt represented by a certificate. This certificate will stipulate the terms of the bond. Terms include the amount of debt, the interest rate on the debt, how often that interest is paid, and the maturity date of the bond or when the debt will be repaid. The bond value is the present value of all future transactions of the bond, interest payments, repayment of debt, and a specific interest rate. So let's run through a general workflow. The goal of bond problems is typically to determine how much an entity should pay in the present for a bond with a specific terms and with consideration of any other economic desires. The first step in a problem like this is to identify the noted terms of the bond and the desired rate of return for the entity analyzing that bond. These variables will drive our analysis. Next, we will then consider the uniform costs and benefits for the specific bond along with the entity's desired rate of return and convert all costs into an acceptable present worth representing what the entity should pay now to fulfill their desires. So let's run through an example. A firm has the opportunity to purchase a five-year bond for $25,000 with a stated interest rate of 6% paid annually. At the end of the bond term, the complete debt is repaid and the final interest payment is made as well. The firm desires a 8% return on investment how much should the startup pay for this bond? The goal is to determine how much the firm should pay now for this specific bond given the noted terms and economic desires of the firm. Considering the uniform costs and benefits for this specific bond along with the firm's desired rate of return on investments of this type, we can convert all costs into an acceptable present worth representing the bond value the firm should pay. In this problem, we are given an interest rate of 0.08 or 8%, which is the desired rate of return. We're given a period of five years. We're given a final value of $25,000. And we're given an annual benefit or interest paid of $1,500 at 6% interest paid annually. We can use the uniform series worth and single payment present worth formulas written in functional notation, which are P is equal to A times P over A, I N, and P is equal to F times P over F, I N, where the term P over A I N and P over F I N can be defined using the given values for the interest and period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So the total present worth of all future interest payments plus the future repayment is A times P over A I N plus F times P over F I N. Referencing the compound interest table for 8% interest on page 119 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, 
we locate n equal 5, which is our period, far left column, and work our way horizontally and find that p over a i n is equal to 3.9927, and p over f i n is equal to 0 0.6806. Now plugging all these values into the equation, we get P is equal to 1500 times 3.9927 plus $25,000 times 0 .6806. And that equals $23,004. So the firm should pay $23,004 for this specific bond. Now there are a few common mistakes we could run into when working these types of problems. It is obviously important to take into account all the factors that are connected to this specific bond. It is easy to forget the rate of return or the yield the bond would pay over the five-year period, but both of them are necessary to ensure a proper analysis. Also, when we see two interest rates used, this could be a bit confusing. We need to remember that ultimately we are concerned with the desired rate of return over the duration of the investment. However, that doesn't mean the annual yield percentage isn't important. This interest rate will help us define the annual benefits back to us and play a critical role in our analysis. These interest rates can easily be mixed up and switched around, so make sure to clearly define them as you are making your way through the problem statement. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp. 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.